This segment brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. But um, very little microcontroller, and it does effectively nothing. It does a little bit of checking, a little bit of crypto, and that's it. And so how did you go about uh, reverse engineering that, and, and what was your inspiration to even start this project? So uh, the project started off by um, one, of my, one of my friends was doing tech support on these locks, and uh, he saw all the problems that people were having with the front desk equipment and all that, so we decided that we would reverse engineer the whole thing and create our own front desk solution that didn't suck. So uh, from there, it went into reversing the key card so we could make our own, um, and coming up with all, you know, figuring out all the encryption, all that. And then it got into the lock protocols, which is where I went from here, and found just gaping vulnerabilities in the intended functionality. And so how do you go about it? Do you like dump the firmware off the pick and start hacking at it and uh, like that way or what? So everything was actually done black box. Uh, everything was done from the protocol level. Even the crypto was done by, um, you know, uh, flip a bit in the plain text, see what comes out in the encrypted text. And the algorithm was simple enough that I didn't have to look at the code at all. Um, everything was done black box. In this case, I sat between the portable programmer that loads the lock and the lock itself with a 70-0 O-scope at, at the beginning and then a USB logic analyzer and just slowly built, built a model of the protocol and, uh, and worked from there and used the Arduino to prototype things. So, so you actually had a debugger to start sniffing what's coming off of that uh, to start kind of reverse engineering the protocol? Yeah, so using the logic analyzer, I was able to look at the communication, but it's one wire, so all the lock and portable, portable programmer communication was mangled. Um, it was all on one wire, and it's very difficult to reverse engineer that. So it ended up just being a lot of, okay, I think it works this way. I'm going to try it out and see, and just reverse it from there. And it ended up being a very, very simple protocol. And so it's, so you say one wire, so it's like half duplex? I mean, this is just like, you know, because uh, uh, this right here, this is not RX and TX? Correct. It's one ground wire, one communication wire. And basically, the, the communication is such that the master, the portable programmer, or my device here, um, when it wants to send something, it just sends sync pulses every few microseconds. And then if you want to send a one bit, you just send it between that. You pull the line load to ground between that. Uh, and the lock does the same thing. The master sends those pulses, and the lock just pulls the line to ground whenever it wants to send a one bit. Um, very, very simple. And it's similar to the Dallas one wire protocol that some people may have seen. Um, but it way predates it by like five or six years. Um, but very, very simple, bi-directional one-wire protocol. And so what made you take this to the, okay, so once you figured out, like playing with, you know, uh, it black box, what, what made you say like, okay, cool, now let's make it practical. Like how did you take that next step and, and what were the choices that you had to make in that? So the practical side of it just sort of happened. Um, I, in the course of reversing the Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community inspired creations and be sure to watch new episodes of the Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode, Ben Heck builds some portable solar powered items that might be useful in a camping trip, a phone charger and a rotisserie for cooking bratwurst. Also, Ben started a new promotion in this episode. If viewers can spot the Ben Heck bobblehead in the background somewhere in the episode, they can register to win an exclusive grand prize. Go to element14.com slash tbhs to find all the details. So the practical side of it just sort of happened. Um, I, in the course of reversing this, decided to build an opening device because I saw the, the vulnerability was there. I had direct unauthenticated memory access and there's an open command that I can just send on up with some data that I can pull out of RAM. Um, so I just built this device, and then we got in touch with a company and ended up licensing the technology to them, a uh, locksmithing company that works with, um, works with the government uh, for various things in law enforcement. Um, so they ended up making their own device based on my spec, but uh, it just sort of ended up practical just in the course of reverse engineering it. And so why the Arduino? Uh, it's simple. I already had it. Um, at the time, I was broke as hell, so I needed, to, I needed something that I could just use off the shelf. And the Arduino worked well. So what kind of challenges have you run into you know, using the Arduino to interface with the lock? So the problem that I have at the moment is it only works on uh, about one in three locks. Um, the reason being that I use the Arduino sleep functions for all the timing on the protocol, which is very specific and they're very inaccurate. Um, and changing any little bit of code to add, into, add extra functionality will throw off the timing and all that. So 
the code that's out there has incorrect timing, though all the spec is correct. So. so you say one in three locks. Do you mean like one in three like locks that you encounter or one in three attempts on each lock? One in three locks that you encounter. It depends on the circuit board revision. Um, certain ones use different chips and have different timing characteristics. Um, if you implement it properly with the correct timing, which is easy to do on just a standard pick or anything like that, it's trivial to get this working 100% absolutely. So tell me about your talk at DEF CON. I mean, what brought you, or not DEF CON, Black Hat. What, it, what brought you to Black Hat? Did you talk to the vendor? How has that been? So uh, Black Hat, I just, uh, we decided that we were going to release all the information, and the Black Hat submissions were open, and I, I just said, you know what, I'm going to release it all at Black Hat and just make it public and make it, make everybody, you know, make it, make it known to everybody. Um, I have not spoken to the vendor, and the reason that I did that was because I didn't want to get stonewalled and end, and end up with this information going out three years from now when they finally say, okay, all right, you know, this is, you know, we can't do anything about this. Um, the locks are not flashable. This can't be fixed with a software change. This has to be fixed by replacing the circuit boards on the locks. Um, and that's an expensive undertaking when there's four to 10 million of them out there. Um, I didn't want to get into a situation where they were saying, yeah, we're going to fix it, we're going to fix it, and, and go through that. And really, it comes down to this vulnerability is so simple that anyone with a little bit of hardware reversing experience could find this in days. Um, if you know what you're looking for, this could be found, or if you really want to get in. Um, and that's why I believe strongly that someone has found this in the past. Uh, I find it very unlikely that they haven't. So I decided the best course of action was to get it out there, let hotel owners know you have a gaping vulnerability in your locks, and there's no way to fix this. You gotta figure out something to do about this, whether that's going to different lock manufacturers or figuring out a physical solution to this, something. You, know, you need to do something about this. So what are your thoughts on the fact that here we are in Las Vegas where there are potentially hundreds of thousands of these locks, and oh, there's just so happens to be tens of thousands of hackers here right now. So uh, I'm really hoping that people don't end up using this for bad reasons. I, it's very likely that they will, um, but I'm hoping that they won't. Um, the, the one redeeming factor here in terms of safety right now is that the code as it's out there does not work consistently. Um, that'll be fixed. Someone will change that. Um, I don't think it's going to happen before the end of DEF CON. I'm hoping it doesn't happen before the end of DEF CON. But either way, even if there weren't you know, 10,000 or so hackers out here, these locks are worldwide and there's millions of them. Um, you know, with the information out there, it's been downloaded over 100,000 times from my site now. Um, the information is out there, and even if there wasn't a congregation of hackers here, I'm sure that people are building these right now, um, as, as sad as that is. Um, but that's, information cuts both ways. And so you say that this is one of the...